Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys figure review. Now today I'm super excited to be taking a look at none other than Aquaman himself based off his appearance in his solo movie. Now when I first saw set pics and stuff like that of this orange and green suit, I said to myself, what on earth is this? I do not like the look of this. But then when I saw the movie and I saw this suit in action, I fell in love. This thing is a work of art and hopefully the figure can capture that as well. There have been some rumblings online and I will try and address some of those issues. Now if you do want to see these really early Hot Toys unboxings and reviews, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as a brand new video goes live on the channel, including the Toys Era Joker, which is coming up very soon. Now if you'd like to pick up your very own Aquaman, he is in stock and going up for pre-order right now with ToysWonderland.com and the link for that is down in in the description below. They also have recently launched their payment plans and rewards program. Just by signing up an account, you'll get a thousand points, which equates to around 13 US dollars. More info is at that link down below. Now we're going to try doing something new in this video. If you saw my post on Facebook, I asked if you'd like to see me combine the unboxing and review video all in one. And that's exactly what we're going to be trying here today. I'm going to take this box off the rotating turntable and we're going to do the unboxing as part of the review. Again, in the comments, do let me know if you like this layout or not and we'll work on it in the future. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the box off the turntable, lay it flat in the light box, and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for Aquaman himself. Now do let me know down in the comments below if you prefer me to go back to the old format of having unboxing and review separately, or you like them together like we're trialing in this one right here. Either way, taking a look at the art on the front of the box, you can see Aquaman, and of course the logo, his logo from the front of his belt, and then of course a picture of Arthur Curry with King Atlan's trident itself on the front of the box. It's a very simple design, but I love the way it looks. It has this sort of Atlantean armor wrapping around the sides, and then of course Aquaman on the other side, and then on the back, all the cast and crew. Now I've already taken the liberty of snipping the tape along the top. One of the most dangerous things you can do is using a knife on camera, so I've decided not to do that this time, just be a little bit more careful. So here we have the figure himself. So what we're going to do is take a look at the clam tray, what he comes like out of the box, then we're going to take a much closer look at all of the accessories and the figure himself. As you can see, he comes with the King Atlans trident on the front of the box there, and we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later in this video video, but here is the figure himself, and he looks absolutely fantastic right off the bat. That's my initial impression. The colors pop, he looks really vibrant, and yes, I will be addressing some of the concerns in this video, but for now, just know that I am really impressed with the fresh unboxing experience on this guy right here, and then of course, you can see he does have the rest of his accessories in the bottom of the box, including his awesome display base. Either way, what we're going to do now is get all of the bits and pieces out of the clam tray, put them in the light box, all sort of arranged, and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of Aquaman's accessories. Now let's take a look at the trident first because I know a lot of people were very excited for this piece right here, me included. It looks good, don't get me wrong, but it is missing the sort of pitting work that would have made this look like proper metal. This looks a little bit cheap in my opinion. It still looks good. I love the gradation of the orange paintwork and the sculpting is fantastic, but in my opinion it could have been a little bit more real world metal looking if they'd added that sort of black pitting that they do on Iron Man figures. Still good and I'm still glad that we got it, but that could have been a little bit better. Now let's take a look at the display base. This piece might look a little bit familiar to you in a different color. This of course came with the dark side version of Anakin as the lava with the pandroid on top. They have of course reused it for this Aquaman figure, which I think works perfectly fine. I do like the water effect and this being a more centerpiece style display base works perfectly for Aquaman because of course he's the only figure in the line for now. Fingers crossed that we do get more. Now you can see that there is that battery compartment underneath. It doesn't work. There's no electronics in here. Unfortunately, it would have looked really cool being lit up. But then again, what kind of excuse does water have for lighting up anyway? Still a really nice display base. Now he doesn't really come with a bunch of stuff. He does come with some hands. Then again, what else would you really have given this version of Aquaman? But as you can see, they do have the sort of armor sculpted on there. It's painted really nicely and it looks pretty darn good. Either way, that's pretty much it for the accessories. What we're going to do now is get Aquaman himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman himself, standing in the light box, straight up and down, no crazy posing or anything like that. And he looks fantastic. I initially had a couple of issues in terms of the arms laying flat down by his side. When I saw the prototypes, they wouldn't do it. When I saw the prototype pictures, again, they didn't look like they'd be laying flat down. But here in hand, you can sort of manipulate the arms a little bit. And yes, they are on soft 
ratchets so they can get pretty close to the body and I think this looks pretty darn natural. Again, he is a guy wearing a big suit of armor technically so it makes sense that they can't go completely flush and this figure captures that perfectly. I think this works really well. Now the colors are super vibrant. This guy is going to go perfectly alongside your comic concept Wonder Woman and your Justice League Superman. Those two have super vibrant colors and all three of them will play off each other. Now I do hope that in the future we'll get some sort of comic concept version of Batman or something to complete a really nice vibrant Justice League set and that includes a Flash as well. I'm looking at you Ezra Miller Flash. I do want a really vibrant red version of him but only time will tell with that concept line if they do continue making more figures. Either way, enough about that. What we're going to do now is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Punching in to take a closer look at Aquaman himself. Here he is and he looks freaking phenomenal. Now let's talk about some of the negatives that people do have right off the bat. The first being the bulk. People are saying he's just too big. Well I don't really see it. I think he has to be this big to come across as imposing enough and big enough in person as a figure. Yes maybe Jason Momoa was a little bit slimmer but I think this captures it perfectly fine. Now I have seen the suit, the actual screen use suit twice in person and the scales in my opinion on this figure actually replicate the real life suit perfectly fine. Yes, they should be bigger, but maybe at this scale, if you'll pardon the pun, they would have looked completely out of whack if they were any bigger and they would have hindered articulation. This is perfectly serviceable, at least for me. Now, in terms of the belt buckle, this should have been something that they updated, but maybe it was too far down the line of production, they couldn't slim it down and make it a little bit narrower, so this is what we got, and if that's the reason, I am perfectly fine with that. Now, we have to remember that this, in 1-6 scale, is pretty much the only version of Aquaman from the Solo movie. Show me another version that does it better, then we can talk. But for me personally, this one is very darn good. Now let's take a look at that head sculpt. It is the same head sculpt as Justice League Aquaman. However, his eyes have a little bit of an orange tint to them and they are off to the side. Yes, you can interchange the head sculpts between the two. I don't know why you'd want to, but it's definitely something you can do. Now the hair does have a little bit of a lighter treatment down towards the bottom. This should be all dark. I do get that, but that's something that you're going to have to live with, unfortunately, when it comes to this figure. Now in terms of the arms themselves, I did initially think, like I said, just before that they weren't going to be able to go down by the side of the body but you can actually push them down quite far and I think that works perfectly fine. A lot of people I'm sure will be worried about this butt flap sort of piece. It is a sort of rubbery style plastic. It does come across a little bit cheap. Don't get me wrong, I still like the way it looks, but a little bit more shading would have gone a long way. This chest armor has a bunch of shading, especially under all of the little muscle sections. It looks fantastic, and when you get to the belt section, it comes across a little bit plain. Now, these pieces on the arms look marvelous. This nice metallic paintwork that extends down to the hands as well. They look pretty darn good. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit. As you can see, he is wearing his green pants, which contrasts very nicely to the the vibrant gold of the upper torso. Now do be careful when you are articulating these legs. As you can see, the honeycomb pattern over the top is screen printed. So just like Justice League Superman, if you have it bent especially up the top there and stuck to itself for a long period of time, it may adhere. So when you pull it apart, it will tear. Just be very careful. Now it does have this subtle sort of shimmer effect over the top. I love the way that looks. I think that comes across very nicely. Now a few people did say the legs look too thick. They are completely padded and they do feel a little bit squishy. So yes, they do have some padding in there. Maybe you could remove it. I am definitely not going to be trying to do that. But in my opinion, they don't look overly big. Take a look at Justice League Superman. His legs are actually bigger than these right here. And Arthur Curry, aka of course Jason Momoa, was a big dude. So I think this works perfectly fine. Now coming down to this boot cover section, a lot of people also did say this looks a little bit toyetic, but it does have a nice metallic paintwork and then this pearl effect over the top. It looks like it's got a bit of a wet look to it. And I love the way that comes across. I don't think it looks cheap or toyetic at all. I actually really like that, especially the scales on the back there. It has a very high-end feel. Now, in terms of the feet themselves, they are separate to this boot cover, so you get a bunch of ankle motion, and I really do appreciate the way that looks, because when you do have him on his water display base, you want to have it look like he's sort of hovering there, and you can get the ankles down a little bit, which is perfectly serviceable, in my opinion, for an armored-up figure. Either way, that's pretty much it for this figure. What we're going to do now is get the Justice League version of Aquaman out here and do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. And here we have them standing side-by-side. -side. Now, let me quickly just remark on how impressive it is that the solo version of Aquaman can have his arms almost completely flat down by his sides, where the Justice League one can't, and those are actually pegged into the body. That is very impressive and shows that Hot Toys have been making strides towards improving their rubber body technology. 
back when we got some of the 92 and 89 Batman figures, they were very restricted, but this guy right here can move really nicely. Now, let me just quickly talk on the actual head sculpts themselves. They are identical, but the paintwork is very different. For some reason, they've gone a little bit darker on the Solar Movie version, and the eyes are orange compared to the blue eyes on the Justice League version. I'll have to check to see if that's film accurate or not, but I do appreciate the differences between the two. The hair looks pretty much exactly the same. It's a little bit lighter on the Justice League version with a bit more gold tint to it, where it's a little bit more grayish on the Solo version. Now, the height is almost exactly the same between the two, but the Justice League figure is a little bit taller than the Solo movie version. Also, there's a lot more bulk on the Solo version. I don't know, again, if that's accurate or not, but I do personally really like the way it looks. And because I know people are going to be asking for it, here is the Solo movie version of Aquaman compared to Justice League concept version of Wonder Woman, Justice League Superman, Justice League Flash, Justice League Batman, and Training Armor Wonder Woman from her solo movie. Now, ladies and gents, it is 2020, and in the spirit of trying something new, I do want to go over articulation. Now, there is a word of warning. This by no means fully showcases the absolute limit of the posability. I'm sure in person, when you have this figure, you can push it a lot further than I am, but I do quickly want to show you what the bits and pieces do look like when they're moving around. Now, in terms of the head sculpt, it is very rigid. It is on a separate peg to the neck itself, so technically you can get a bit more movement in terms of the head separately to the neck, but yes, it is rather limited, as especially side to side. Now, in terms of the arms, they do go out to about there without me wanting to push it any further. They are a little bit restricted because of the type of rubber that they are. You can, of course, bend at the little elbow there and it does crease up. So do be careful of the rubber. And then you do have a rotation at the bicep. It is stiff. It is very difficult to move these joints because of the rubber torso, but that is to be expected. Luckily, this piece moves around to accommodate the stuff that you're trying to move. Now, in terms of the wrist, obviously, typical Hot Toys wrist articulation. Now, he does have a waist joint or a torso joint I should say. Again, the rubber section will hinder it, but it can rotate and it can bend. Just be careful with how you're using it. Now he does also rotate independently of the legs and that's a nice smooth joint and it gets a really decent range of motion. Now in terms of the legs themselves, they can move forward to about there without risking damaging the suit and then you do have a double bend at the knee, but you don't want to stress this part too much. Just be careful. I know I'm saying be careful a bunch in this video, but I don't want anyone to damage their figure and then of course blame Justin for his unboxing and review video so just be careful then of course in the feet you do have a bunch of range of motion there because it is on a ball joint moving on to the three cool and three annoying things about solo movie Aquaman the first annoying thing has to be trying to get this trident in his hand just like I had the issue with Armored Thanos these hands are incredibly stiff so trying to shove this piece in here causes it to bow and flex a lot I'm also worried about the paint chipping off so just be careful the second annoying thing has to be the paint treatment on this piece right here. It doesn't look very good. They should have added at least a few more washes, especially in the crevices, to bring out the detail. Now, while it's not much of an issue for me personally, a lot of people will take issue with the fact that you can barely move his head. It's very restricted. Up and down is perfectly fine, but left and right, you can barely move it at all. The first cool thing about Solo Movie Aquaman has to be the fact that you can get his arms really darn close to the sides of his body. In fact, I do believe this is even better than the actor was actually afforded in the real life suit. I'm really impressed with what Hot Toys have done here. If anyone has owned Arkham City Batman, you know what I'm talking about. The second cool thing, and while this is just a repurposed display base, this is repurposing done right. This works perfectly for Aquaman. I love the paint treatment. I love the green sort of bottom part and the nice blue towards the top. This looks fantastic. The third cool thing has to be that head sculpt. While it is pretty much exactly the same as the Justice League version, I am still really impressed with the updated paintwork and the color of the eyes. They really do pop against the body itself. Just wrapping up on the solo movie version, of Aquaman himself. Now, do let me know down in the comments section below if you've enjoyed this new format for the reviews. I will definitely be taking note of what people are saying. Now, in terms of the figure himself, he is really done awesome. I am very impressed with this release. As simple as it is and as little stuff as he does come with, this piece has blown me away. I love the color scheme. I love the bulk of the body. And of course, that trident is freaking phenomenal. I also do love the display base being that sort of reused style, but being perfect in my opinion for this Aquaman figure. A lot of people do have a lot of complaints with this piece right here. I've already said in this video, show me a better 1-6 scale representation of this figure right here, then we can talk seriously about some of the nitpicks people do have, but in my opinion, they're just that, nitpicks. This figure as a whole blows me away, it's a very impressive piece, and one that I'm sure Hot Toys have put a lot of love and intention into, and it definitely does show. Now, do you pick up this one or the Justice League version? Well, I do think this one is more iconic, it's more comic book 
look inspired being that more vibrant look and if you're going for that vibrant look for your DC figures with a concept Wonder Woman and Justice League Superman this one slots in perfectly well so definitely do pick it up if that's what you're going for it is in stock right now with toyswonderland.com and the link for that is down in the description below they have of course recently launched their payment plans and a rewards program more information is at that link also check out the link to six scale network the brand new awesome Facebook group come along chat figures and see what's coming up next on the channel also check out our brand new second channel being Justin and Steph for behind the scenes videos collection room updates and a hell of a lot more good stuff like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video